Good morning. On Monday, we discussed Ituma Matam, the end following the linear development of the story, pointing out the themes, the significance of the characters. Today, I'm going to first talk about the general style of the film and the general themes. The themes that carry on the structure of the film, that justify the structure of the film. Then I'm going to show you a few sequences with frames taken at one second intervals to illustrate what I'll be saying first. If there is time, we're going to watch one more scene from the film, okay? So I put society on top because this film may give the wrong impression to a casual viewer. There are two teenagers that have such a strong bond, such a strong connection that literally the only thing missing to make them one is sex, right? Having sex with each other, having physical intimacy with each other. Yet, this film is about society. It is about the relationship between these two young people and society, or lack thereof. It is about their transition from an age where they're completely absorbed with their own existences and personal individual concerns and adulthood when it will be unavoidable. They will not be able to continue ignoring the signs around them, the signs that there is a society around them where you find injustice, unfairness, privilege, and poverty. And therefore, at some point, you have to take a political position. The movie ends before this transformation can come into the lives of the characters. A transformation whereby they have either to take a political position like the sister of Julio, right, who's uh, called the beret because she's wearing this beret uh, that is reminiscent of the youth movement of Paris 1968 and she's going in to the university but spending a lot of time planning public demonstrations or you take another political uh, position which is simply to conform right to go along with the role assigned to you by your family, by your family's standing in society, etc. So this could be the case of the notch, right? To enter the careers that his family would want for him. And in fact, if you remember, there are a few references at the beginning of the film and then at the very end when they meet in the cafe, about Tenoch's father's insistence that he study economy, right? Meaning he should become either an entrepreneur, a businessman, or a politician. So keep this in mind. It's not simply a film about sex and friendship. It is a film about society. And that is why it turns into a road movie because a road movie can be a movie about society. So the way the film is structured and the way the film is presented visually in terms of stylistic patterns is articulated along two, the two sides of social life, private and public. The private world of the characters and the public world of society at large. However, there is also an intermediate 
space, which can be private, but not entirely private, which can easily become social or become loaded with social issues, social questions. So the private lives of the characters is represented in reference to teenage sex, right? Teenage sex, again, is, as, as I've said a couple of times at this point, this is not an erotic movie. Sex is here not to develop the theme of erotic love. It's simply because teenage sex is represented, included here, as the culmination of everything that is private, right? It's the absolute exclusion of everything else in the world. Teenage sex, because sex with adults, such as sex with Luisa, or possibly sex with each other between Tenoch and Julio, is another matter. But teenage sex is the complete exclusion of everything that is public. And in fact, the two forms of teenage sex, masturbation, that are included in this film, masturbation or sex with the girlfriends, Anna and Ceci, are both clearly form of teenage sex, meaning that even when they have sex with their girlfriend, there isn't a social connection, there isn't much intimacy, right? It is teenage sex, it's two teenagers having sex with each other because it is the next step after masturbation, right? But it's different from sex with an adult, such as Luisa, which is more complicated, clearly. And in order to represent visually the private emphasis, the emphasis in the lives of the two main characters at the beginning on their private worlds, you find them inside bedrooms. And in fact, this film emphasizes the bedroom and the road uh, overall, right? You find a lot of sequences that are shot inside bedrooms of houses, bedrooms of hotels or motels, bedrooms of other people's houses, such as the cabana of Chewy, right? And then you find the road prominently displayed in the film. But the cadence of the film is through the encounters in the bedrooms more than anything. In terms of private spaces, certainly another private space, a space that is represented as private is Luisa's apartment. Okay? And if there is time, we'll see frames and, and analyze, examine how that is represented. The foundation of their private world is their friendship. The friendship itself builds up a space, right? The, these two friends spend a lot of time in close proximity and together. So their friendship itself is like a cocoon, isolating them from the rest of society. Because within the space of their friendship, the mental space of their friendship, all they do is do drugs, talk about sex, engage in masturbation, and there is no room in that mental space for other issues <coughs> having to do with society, having to do with the world outside, really. A few references to their school uh, and their school activities, but really very little. And in terms of privacy, the pool is an extension and a visual representation of their private world, right? Because within the pool, underwater, keep in mind that they're challenging each other, swimming underwater. And, and that's symbolic, that's intentional. Because when they're submerged in the water, clearly the world outside is completely excluded, right? That's the culmination of their intimacy of their closeness, although you know that it works in a certain way, it is loaded with certain meanings at the beginning of the film, 
when they first do it, when they do it at the motel, in the swimming pool covered on the surface with leaves, after Tanakh has had sex with Louisa, then it doesn't work as well, right? And the fact that the water in the pool of the motel covered with leaves is not as pure, is not as transparent, is again symbolic of the contamination, of, of the fact that it's not the same. Because, as we said, this is also a film about the end of, right? It's not only the end of Louisa's life, clearly, but the end of the youth, the end of the innocence of these characters, whereby innocence, since these guys are nothing but innocent, by innocence I mean their naivete towards the world, their ability to ignore everything outside their lives, which they won't be able to prolong for a lot of time. Of course, the private world is realized visually through close shots, right? You, you, you see, for example, at the beginning, you see first the bedroom, and then the close shot is on the bodies of, the, the, of, of Anna and Tanat having sex, whereby the public is characterized by wide shots. So even when the car is on the road, often the shot is wide enough to see the car, the road, and the sides of the road. And as an intermediate stylistic feature, you have the camera moving from the car to the side of the road, from one room to the back, from the front, meaning the life of the owners of the house, in the case of Tenach, to the back, where the servants leave work, the kitchen. And this is true or also of another moment when Luisa, Tenach, and Julio are having a dinner at a small restaurant, the small restaurant of another hotel, and then you follow a woman who just entered, and you follow her behind. There is another small living room, there is a kitchen, and so, again, you see this front-back dynamic. In the front, you find the customers, right? Luisa, Tenoch, and Julio are the privileged customers who can afford to tour the country. In the back, you see the low-class people working to guarantee this privileged lifestyle. As an intermediate space, of course you have intermediate between private and public, you have the car. Because again, the car is another cocoon where you can just focus on each other and, and they talk a lot about, what else? Sex. But the car has windows. And so outside of the car, from inside or within a wide shot, you see scenes on the side of the road that should open your eyes to what is going on outside your own individual world. You see the army, the roadblocks of the army, the army checking the cars, possibly arresting people. You see the police arresting peasants and a lot more. So the car is an intermediate place space between private and public. The motels or hotels along the road are also intermediate spaces because as long as they are in the bedrooms they took at these motels, they are in a private space. However, the motel is served by people. So you cannot ignore that that space is not entirely private in that your private existence within the bedroom of the motel is guaranteed, supported by the work of others. Okay. Have I activated an assistant or? Um, so the motels are also intermediate spaces between private and public where you can 
continue your private existence, but it's harder to ignore that the place is served by others, and so it is a social place, right? The same is true for Tenoch, Tenoch's house, which is clearly a privileged uh, uh, residence with servants, and therefore it's not entirely private, both because of the size of the space and also because constantly in the shots you see the servants, you see the staff working in the house. So again, it is privileged, it's a private world, a privileged world, guaranteed, served by, supported by the work of people from the outside society, right? And something else that you see on the road a lot is the evidence of customs and traditions that have existed for a long time outside of Mexico City in the more rural areas of Mexico. And of course, <coughs> the significance of the inclusion of these elements of traditions is that this is a world that is about to get cancelled by globalization, right? So it is, again, the signs of tradition are intermediate between public and private because you see them signs of a private identity that is about to be absorbed by the most public of identities, uh, the, the, the identities in a globalized world, okay? And keep in mind, you should keep in mind that the story takes place in 1999. So it is also important to consider that it is a pre-digital society, right? It's a society before the social media, before the cell phone, okay? So globalization here travels mostly through product, advertisements, but also the economy. Right? The economy that in a country such as Mexico is becoming globalized and therefore certain local realities, practices cannot survive for long. Let's examine the evidence of the theme of the public world in terms of spaces and event. Under private we had the teenage sex the opposite of that is the big wedding of Tanakh's family with the participation of the president, with the mariachi, with the bodyguards, uh, plenty of uh, luxury cars and for, for the guests, etc. And, uh, and, and of course, the opposite of private teenage sex, as I said before, is adult sex with Luisa or if they really want to pursue a sexual relationship between them, then it's not exclusively private, as you can understand. The road is also a public place, and we see the road as an extension of the community with frames that are reminiscent of Il Sorpasso. That is to say, the community is there on the road, but the road, is it a modern place? simply because you travel with vehicles? Not entirely, right? Because clearly there is a great difference between the attitudes of Julio, Tenoch, and Luisa in their car, even though their car is a, a Dodge from 1980, and the people outside, right? It's like Il Sorpasso. Bruno is driving this sports car and behaving on the road with full control, exuberance. His cool, is fashionable. The others are trying to imitate, have vehicles, so they're trying to enter modern life, but you see them that they're not entirely into modernity, right? And of course, the road is also one of the main venues of the economy, and so you see that as well. In terms of public places, the road is also a place where you see a lot of signs. You see the banners where they go find Julio's sister at the demonstration. 
you see some banners on vehicles or on the side of the road. You see signs on the back or the sides of the houses on the road. You see the crosses, right? A lot of crosses. And this tells you that this movie is about society. And it's about the idea that I was describing before. How long, as a teenager growing up in this society, can you ignore the signs of suffering, the signs of violence that are around you? Sooner or later, you have to realize what they mean to you as well, that they're not completely disconnected from your existence because you inhabit the same social space. Of course, uh, if, the if the bedroom was a private space, we find the living room as a public space when Julio is waiting for Ceci to get ready and uh, go to the airport, right? Adult sex is also a public space, a kind of public space because you interact with someone like Luisa, who's a member of society, not Anna and Ceci, who go to school with the same characters, and therefore having sex together is part of the smaller set of practices of a small group. And of course, the opposed to the pool, you find the sea as a public space with water, okay? So let's continue by looking at frames that illustrate some of the things that I told you. Let's lower the shades, please, so that we can see as many details in these frames as possible. And if you look at the pages with frames or the PDFs with frames at home, you'll be able to see even more. We have to wait for the system to warm up. And I put together a few hundreds of frames from a series of sequences, but they're not from the same section of the film. So I'm jumping from one to another. This is the very beginning, right? And it tells you, it confirms what I was saying about private versus public. Because of course, your attention may be caught by the fact that there is a very sexual scene. But how does it begin? It begins from outside the room. It begins from the threshold, the door, right? Because here, again, you see all dark, but this is the door to the bedroom where Tanakh and Anna are having sex. And it's half open, and then the camera will enter, and then you'll see the rest of the room. But it's like peeking into their room. It's like entering their private world, right? while they're having this very private act. And of course, the bedroom itself is being used, since this is the initial premise, the setup of the story, to tell the story of the character with props. And everything in here is significant. Let me move a few frames ahead to show you. This is one second per frame, entering the room, picking inside, and looking at them. And as I said, there are a lot of props, elements around the room that indicate what the character is about. What is the profile of the character? And so you find prominently a picture, a black and white picture of Colombian writer Gabriel Garcia Marquez, right? Indicative of a, a, a movement, uh, signs of change in South American culture. You find, of course, on the nightstand, objects indicative of a teenage life. You find a beer bottle. You find, even if you don't see it clearly here, an ashtray full of smoked cigarettes and possibly joints. You find various lotions and you understand the purpose of that related to sex. And you find a poster, the poster of a film. Uh, let me show you here. And from the very beginning, you can read the title 
Harold and Maud was an American film from 1971 where a young character in his early 20s develops a friendship that blossoms into a romance, into a relationship with an older woman who is 79. So why place this poster here? Because it anticipates the development of the story where Tenoch will have sex with Louisa. Of course, Louisa is not as old as 79, but that's the idea that you have a much younger and an older character, a more immature and a man and a more mature woman, right? So this is not randomly picked and placed on the wall. And then, of course, you see these things. I don't know if you guys recognize this. It's, they're called books, oh. right? People before the year 2000 and before cell phones actually had book collections. And of course, you have also a stereo, and you have music. You have a variety of portraits and pictures everywhere. OK, so this is Tenot's private world that we're introduced to. But then when we see Julio, we see him in the living room, which is essentially a public space. And how do you see that? Not only because of his demeanor, right? Usually you don't see Julio like that. It's more uh, animated. But in here, he has to play the part of the obedient, conforming, obedient teenager conforming to the rules. And the negation of sex from this space is indicated by the fact that he has a pillow over his lap, right? No sex at all in this area. And once you widen this, because of course this is a public space, so you expect to find wider shots. Soon enough, the shot becomes wider after you've uh, gotten enough of the main character while you're listening to the narrating voice. And then you have this kind of wide shot, and look how wide from this side of the room all the way to the end of the dining room, right? With Cess's father reading the newspaper, and again, objects indicating that this is a wealthy bourgeois family, okay? So, wide shot, public space. And then you know that later on, I'm skipping frames later on in the sequence with the excuse of helping her find the passport. Ceci gets Julio into her bedroom and they also engage in sex. Once again, you find the elements that are supposed to simply, in a very stereotypical way, characterize a, a teenager. Again, music. The stereos were, were very common. Uh, before digital devices, you find uh, two uh, cameras. You find a personal computer from the 1990s. You find pictures of various animals. And you find some pictures that are not personal pictures. This is not, probably this is not, this may not be a personal picture, but I haven't been able to identify them to see if they come from films. If you have any suggestions, let me know. And even with this shot, you see more of the bedroom. And in this case, it takes a while to see a closer shot of the two having sex, because this sexual scene is even less intimate than the other. Just says insisting, let's have sex before we go to the airport so we are fine with that. Or so that she uh, can have no regrets when, you know, she's going to Italy, when she engage in sexual activities with uh, other people during her trip. Okay? Now we have another public space, of course, the airport. Ceci and Anna are living, and again, you have quite a wide shot with people coming and going. They're lost in this social space, right? You struggle finding where Julio and Tanakh are. Tenoch. See people 
people coming and going. And you see, though, that even though they could have simply put the camera on a tripod, there are a lot of scenes where the camera is handheld, and this is one of them. You see how uh, the virus frames show movement, and then closing on them, because even in a public space, you can, through the friendship, close up, right? Because both here at the airport and then at the wedding, even though Tenoch and Julio are in a public space, through their relationship, they isolate yourself, themselves from the rest of the world, which is what they try to do in here. And the zooming on them signifies that, right? And you see closer and closer to them. And of course, notice how close they are to each other and compare the physical proximity of Julio and Tenat with their uh, fake intimacy with their girlfriends. And now, of course, you have a beautiful uh, continuity element, the plane, in the shot, because they're on the road, but they're on the road outside of the airport. So you know that this is after Anna and Ceci have left. You don't see them yet. You see a very wide shot because the road is a public space, but the inside of the car can be a very private space. So you see enough of this through a few seconds, and then you see the very small space, and of course the lens makes it even smaller. The characters confined to the front seats of the car, pranking each other with farts, right? And, and joking, talking about school, uh, etc., right? And in line with this prankish atmosphere, you have a chicken feet, chicken food, uh, dangling, hanging from the rear view mirror. Right, so this is the car as a private space, although from the windows, you can still see signs and other cars right, and they're joking with each other, right, they spend a lot of time interacting with each other, but again, there are plenty of shots where you see other signs of society, even bizarre signs such as the van with the clown, an ice cream uh, truck possibly, or artists, Okay. And a different shot, but they're still very close to one another. They're still in a public, in a private space. But then, a few frames later, you have the narrating voice, and the narrating voice is the outside world, essentially. It's a public element. I should have added that to the list on the board. And you have this very wide shot, at the center of which, almost at the center of which, you find a dead body covered with a white blanket because this is the story of Marcelino, the bricklayer who was going to work, crossed the road, and was hit by a car. And although the boys will try to ignore that as much as they can, right? They're just driving by. The voice lets you see what this is about. It's not about just another person who died, but it's about the living conditions of a bricklayer in Mexico City who doesn't have a car, doesn't have access to public transportation right near his house and therefore has to walk a mile before he, he can hitch a ride for work. And under these conditions, his death becomes a social issue, an issue of fairness and justice, right? And from this wide shot, you go back to the car, but at this point, because of the written voice, because you can still see through the windshield, the car is not a private space anymore, it's exactly an intermediate space from which you see the world and again, the question is, how long as a teenager can you ignore what is around you before you start developing your own understanding of what is happening around you? 
and the captions tell you the story of Marcelino through the narrating voice, you see the police, you see them driving by, you see the elements of death, and even though the characters don't comment on this, this becomes significant. In fact, you also see the aftermath of this, right? The after story. The fact that the body of the bricklayer was picked up by the Green Cross, taken without ID to the coroner. So, you know, they insist on this at the beginning of the film to let you know that this film is also about justice and social issues. It took four days for his body to be claimed. So, tells you, you can have the strongest friendship, the strongest circles, circle of friends around you, but there are people who live in Mexico City with no social support. They can die and nobody realizes they're dead for days. This is frames later, again, we're skipping a few scenes. The first frame where you see Tenoch's house. And again, it's, it's very, from the very few frames, very indicative. You find a German shepherd, typical dog, the guard dog, the watchdog of rich people that you find stereotypically around villas all over the world. Nothing against German shepherds. They're, they're great, smart dogs. If they behave in a certain way, sometimes it's because of their training. And you find this... Uh, beautiful uh, cultivated garden around the house, but then when the dog's head moves out, you will see already staff working in the background. You'll see a woman cleaning the windows here. You'll see a man, another servant going by. And this, although it's not completely clear, but in my view, this could be St. Francis of Assisi based on the iconography, with a bird on his hand, a bull on the other hand. So it's the social posturing, indicative of the social posturing by the family of Tenoch. They're wealthy, but they want to be seen as empathic, as compassionate, right? As close to the people. So they have a dog to keep people away, but then they have the saint of peace, the saint of animals, next to it. So this is a possible interpretation. I haven't found a copy of the script, so I don't know if the script would clarify that. The script was, was published, actually, but I have a copy of that. And again, as the dog is moving out, you see a servant cleaning the window, and then another man going by. And the narrating voice tells you more about the background, about the relevance of this villa. And the upper class nature of the people who live in here, right? He's a member of the government. But while they're saying how important he is, uh, that they studied in Harvard, uh, what uh, Tanakh's mother is doing, you actually see the people who support their lifestyle, right? The servants cleaning the windows, the people working in the garden, right? So you know that they're developing the theme of privilege. And then you see the interior of the house, but it's not exactly a private space because the house is so big, right? So. And, and there are other signs, for example, a piano in there, art, etc. And, and again, the spaces are not small, confining the characters. You see the art uh, on little sculptures and vases, the pottery on the uh, left side. And then finally, even in this kind of space, which is intermediate between public and private, you see the more private cocoon of these two friends. Again, in terms of props, anticipating the development of the story, this is a magazine about weddings. 
because they're preparing for the wedding uh, that will be shown later where the president of Mexico has been invited. However, ironically, on the cover of this uh, glossy magazine about weddings, they're preparing a joint. But now with the closer shots, you see that even in this big house, they can just focus on each other and ignore everything else, ignore the servants, their lives, etc. Right? And you see close enough this shot to uh, include all of them. And, and then you have this, I don't know if you noticed this, when Tenoch's mother is introduced, she's like the queen of a chessboard. She's moving from one stone to another. You see through the frames that she's not touching the grass. Right, as a, represent a symbolic representation of a wealthy, privileged woman living suspended without contact with the rest of the world, including the servants who keep up this garden. So see her on this tile, and then she's moving to another without touching the ground, and then she's moving to another, right? It's kind of trivial, it's, it's not the most ingenious way, and very readable. Then you find another intermediate space, because the country club where they go, because Tanakh's father is a member of this club, is a huge place, yet you only find these two boys, because nobody's going there, because only people who have a membership can go there and reach people uh, don't use everything they own or have access to. So this is both a big public space, but also a space where they can be with each other, right? Because there is no one around, or virtually no one. And you see them in this space to, to see what kind of life they conduct, and then you see them inside the world. And the fact that they're swimming underwater is indicative of their proximity and how they exclude the rest of the world. When they're underwater, nothing can reach either of them other than the presence of the other. Okay, so just to show you how many frames are uh, spent showing them underwater. Then you see them again in this kind of intermediate space. These are the huge bathrooms of the country club, but it's only the two of them. So even though it's a public space, they can develop their private relationship in here. And then from here, you see them in a public space, which is the wedding, right? And you see the wider shot, even though you have, a, in, in the foreground, you have one of the bodyguards, but you see how wide this shot is to indicate this is a public place. But then again, what happens is that the two friends, even in this place, will isolate each other from, they'll, they'll just connect with each other and isolate themselves from the rest of the event, right? Essentially, they're only interacting between them, with Yano, with Luisa, and minimally with Tanakh's father. Okay, so you see the horses, you see the bodyguards, mostly white shots, and then you finally see the friends in this environment, but then closing on them because it's really their way of isolating themselves from the rest of the world. The father comes in to interrupt briefly this, but it's a small interruption, and I believe, no, I don't know if this is Luisa going by. And there it is. What they do with the space is interesting when they approach Luisa, because notice what happens when Luisa is with them, and when Luisa is with Yano within the same uh, shot, right? By the same fence. In here, Luisa is purposely isolating herself from the rest, looking out, not really looking, right? Reflecting. And they approach her, they get very close, and she remains here without turning her shoulders. Initially, they don't mean anything to her, right? 
when Yano will come, who's her husband, she will move out. She will make space. She doesn't want to be cornered by Yano, right? So you see that intimacy, closeness is possible with the two boys, not possible anymore with Yano. Their relationship is dying. See, they're closening, they're getting closer, but she doesn't turn completely. She remains in the corner, and they're close. Notice that the first time they're close, but not too close. Now Yano comes into the scene. At some point, there it is. And the first thing, Yano is territorial, right? Move away from my wife. Go away. And then, however, he cannot really achieve proximity and intimacy with his wife. Because notice how now she's turning and moving away from the corner. So Yano, who, who was closer, getting closer to her, is being pushed back towards the staff, essentially. Right? And she's moving away from the corner. She is not getting real close to him. And then is the, this is the second time they go to her. Now she's alone again, because Yano has this problem with the jacket, has to change. And now you see the development of intimacy and connection. This time, it's a closer shot, shot, privacy, intimacy, and they themselves get closer and closer to her, and now she's turning more into them. She's opening up to the idea of a relationship with them while they're explaining this idea, talking about themselves and then talking about this mythical Playa Beach, Boca del Cielo, okay? Notice so how close, now she's turned completely to them and they get closer and closer to the point that now you see that she's trying to lean out, lean back, right? Because if she didn't, then they would really touch. So she's keeping some distance, but certainly entertaining the idea, see her leaning back, and the camera accentuated this through the movements. They're leaning into her, she's leaning out a bit, and then she resumes her position to isolate herself again. And this is uh, the, the first in a series of shots that you will find even in the movie Roma, done in 2018 by Quaron, where you see going from the front to the back. The front of the event is the guests, the mariachis, the horsemen, uh, the president, the back is the kitchen. So how do you achieve this? You follow a character, a waiter, a waitress, a, members of, a member of the staff of the house, going from the front where the public event is going on to the back where the people supporting that event and not being acknowledged are present. So you see her walking quickly through the kitchen, out of the kitchen, out of the villa to those who are excluded from the event. The parking lot with the fancy expensive cars where the drivers and the bodyguards are waiting because they cannot participate in the event themselves. And so it becomes again about justice, about privilege, etc. Okay, and you see not a lot. This is uh, the confrontation between uh, Luisa and Yano, but I'll skip this, let me, since I don't have time, let me move to something more significant. And this is the other scene where you see the representation of privilege. This is Tenoch's house, and this is Leo, who is bringing his nanny and, and the house waitress, who's bringing a sandwich from the kitchen to him. And you'll see her through the, this very expansive house, right? It, meaning it's not a couple of rooms away. Because you have to get the idea of how much effort, how much work goes into this ridiculous thing of bringing a sandwich to a teenage boy who could very well go down to the kitchen and get a sandwich for himself, right? So you have a grown-up woman 
doing all this work for this boy. And you see her from the kitchen, you follow her through, you see from distance, this is the patio of the house, to give you a sense of the rich house, you see the staircase, you see her going up the stairs. You rarely see people going up the stairs in films unless they're trying to uh, add film at time or there is some significance attached to this. In this case, is the struggle, the, the work done for this service. Right? You see the sandwich, you see her traveling through a living room or a studio into another room where he is very comfortable watching TV or playing and brings his sandwich. And now from this wide shot, meaning a public event, you get to the two of them. And she even answers to make this even more, in case you missed it, she even answers the phone for him and then gives the phone to him because it's uh, Louisa. And let me show you, I'll skip this perhaps, which is Louisa's house. Let me just point out that at this point, Louisa is already moving out, right? You see bags already. And you see a lot of things around. You see behind her, you will see a bottle of wine, a glass half, half full. And before she leaves, everything will be clean because we know that she's not coming back to this house. And it's a wider shot exactly because this house is about to cease being her private place, right? It's, it's not a place where she feels comfortable. Um, there are quite a few frames where you see uh, this image on two different posters. And, and for sin querer means it was unintentional, which plays along with what Hiano told her. Right? He had sex with another woman, but he didn't mean to. Again, a lot of details can be relevant in a film because you have, in a big film, a lot of people spending a lot of time taking care of every single detail. Everything has to be significant. You don't waste a shot. Uh, then, in a, and this is her getting ready. But I want to show you another of, of those sequences where you see, oh, this is, this is the, the, the road where similarly to Il Sorpasso, they see how the people are getting to the road trying to imitate modern life. And this is, of course, a decorated Volkswagen Beetle, typical car of Mexico because they were made there until the 1980s with a bride and a groom. 